Hey guys, how's it going and welcome back to the channel. Welcome back to some more F1 2021 My Team Season 2. We've had some stunning races recently and I hope you guys have been up to date with the series so far. If you guys aren't, make sure you head down to the description down below. There is a playlist link to the whole playlist of the F1 2021 My Team Career Mode series. So please be sure to catch up and let's move on to the French Grand Prix in this episode, round 6. Just want to make sure you guys are subscribed to the channel. Make sure that subscribe button down below is pressed and make sure you hit the notification bell as well so you're notified as soon as the next video of F1 2021 My Team goes up. You don't want to miss out on any future episodes so the subscription button is going to be your friend. Thank you guys for the support and let's move on to the French Grand Prix. So sorry about last episode guys. My face cam and recording software kind of didn't sync up so my voiceover on this program is now working I think so we are in good shape for this episode we should be going according to plan so let's go into the chassis department how do you want us to deal with this one there's an event deadline we are on the cusp of a significant step forward in our component development but we're not going to achieve it by our internal deadline unless there's a last minute push from the whole department i suggest we authorize time for the next couple of weeks to get us over the line so chassis morale is going to go down but we will get a discount on the fuel tank positioning um decline would mean we would work um according to plan and not to risk overworking the staff well i think i'll agree because i think our chassis morale is quite Thanks. high i know these kinds of decisions can be challenging but i think you made the right call there we go perfect timing and we have more sponsorship uh deals to work through last time we did as well so let's take a look again and see who we want to sign with i think we'll try signing with lupo industries again uh, achieve a top 10 finish during the race that is our goal right now trying to achieve a top 10 finish getting some points on the board so we will confirm with lupo and then get them on our car as well okay so let's take a look at our r d performance i was wrong our chassis department morale is now low we were on normal i believe aerodynamics and powertrain are on high morale durability and chassis are low so we'll try to boost our morale in this episode if we can taking a look at the performance comparison we are dropping down the order so aston martin and alpine have overtaken us we were just behind ferrari but yeah they are uh they have a better car better performing car alfa tari alfa romeo williams and haas are still behind behind us williams are ahead of haas i think that was a new development in recent uh, episodes i don't know uh it seems like williams were ahead of alfa romeo at the azerbaijan grand prix but have been consistently ahead of haas for most of the season so that is good to see but yeah for us we got to take a look at our developments here did any new development come through yes the ecu upgrade has come through and that was all uh failure chance has gone oh i didn't notice this on the top right here morale is low failure chances plus one percent build time is plus two percent if their morale is high we have a positive boost so failure chance has dropped by one percent and build time has dropped by two percent Ooh, okay so the worse it gets the more uh, impact it has so we'll try to boost their um, morale soon but we need to look at what upgrades we want i think i want to invest in drag reduction so we're going to do the final one here rear wing end plates drag reduction upgrade here will it come in time for future grand prix so we can do rushed for uh, delivery before austria which i think i'll try because our failure chance has dropped by two percent and build time has dropped by four percent so i think we're in good shape here so we'll try to get that in rushed and we will jump a couple cars on the performance standing here in aerodynamics so hopefully that'll come in time for the austrian grand prix so this is midweek just before the french grand prix uh, we have a development fail which is the lightweight wheel rims i was hoping that would come through before the french grand prix we don't have any we don't have sufficient funds for this to be restarted uh it's going to come before the silverstone grand prix so we'll have to wait until the end of the week or maybe closer to the uh practice sessions uh we have another department event You've in the powertrain 
LRN Skill is a company offering a suite of online lecture materials, many of which would be a useful development resource for our engineers. Access to the materials is a one-off licensing purchase, but we and then we'd need personnel to integrate them into our existing development processes. So it's not cheap, but it would be really valuable. Um, I'll do it. I have enough cash, so we'll take the resource points and spend the cash for it. Um, do I have... Oh, I have uh, plenty of R&D points now. Uh, let's go back to chassis and restart this one then. It'll come before the Silverstone Grand Prix. I do have 900 or so resource points available. And I think it was on the chassis that we have fuel tank positioning, which is just enough. We have just enough for this. So maybe we can get it before Silverstone. Oh, I'm not going to take that chance. I'm actually going to go standard and have this arrive before the Hungarian Grand Prix. So let's do that. And let's move on with time. And that is it. I don't think there's anything else that we can do at this time. So we'll move on into race weekend. And let's see what we can do at the Circuit Paul Ricard. Welcome to qualifying at the French Grand Prix. So practice session overall was a stunning success here in France. We set up our car according to our time trial setup, which you guys will see in the previous episode of the French Grand Prix. But uh, yeah, it's an overall solid track, a very comfortable track for us, and I think I've mastered every corner. So mastered is kind of a high word or a lofty word to use here, but I do feel comfortable on the track and we've been blazing through the practice Great programs stuff. during Pretty practice sessions. So FP1 again, a very solid session for us. Getting used to the track, went out on mediums and soft compound tires and we blew through all of the uh, programs really quickly. So I had to pace myself a little. We also went out on hards by the way because of the track acclimatization program, which of course demands that you do it on the hards or recommends I should say. So we did that and then uh, we also got all our development boost uh, objectives done as well as you guys will see as well. We are also running quite heavily on the um, on fuel as well. We were quite heavy most of the time so I think it is another Grand Prix that we can really uh, lighten our fuel load on. So I think our car has reached a point where it's quite fuel efficient so we can really take it easy on the fuel here. Um, yeah other than that I would think that our first run really taught us that the medium and soft compound tires are always superior. I think the hards are okay on this track so if we have to do a medium to hard stint I think we might consider it but uh, overall I I think we will try the medium soft stints or soft soft medium medium soft medium something like that uh, in order to uh, try and get the best time possible so fp1 ended with us uh, i think p10 or so fp2 we ended somewhere around uh, p21 or something like that we were quite slow compared to the others they were getting quite fast on track so it was quite disheartening to see us try so hard to get the qualifying pace program completed and see ourselves way back Back down the order so we are projected to be somewhere around p13 p12 according to the program but it doesn't seem like we will be in that region if we continue to perform like we did in the practice sessions practice three we tried it one last time just to see how well we did and i think we were quite off the pace i think we were somewhere around p16 by the end so again it just shows that it's quite a competitive field of cars coming into the french grand prix david kota did all well overall and i think he got a couple uh, resource points for us a good chunk of resource points that add up a lot into our resource point bank so hopefully we'll use that in the next episode as we continue our pr progress through the performance charts and that is all uh, we are looking at qualifying here at paul ricard it is going to be quite an interesting session i think considering the cars are quite quick around here if we also take a look at the weather i think it's going to be dry for qualifying but there will be a rain stint in the race itself so hopefully we can get a solid competitive time in during qualifying one hopefully we can make a q2 appearance and our goal will be to try and get a q3 appearance so let's go out let's set a lap
first lap let's see how well we perform here i don't think we have a very competitive time we'll be p20 compared to the others gotta do another lap here slightly improved three tenths or so let's see where that places us don't think we haven't moved at all this is bad we gotta go into the garage quickly set a new set of self compound tires on a car and try to push out There we go. Four tenths, four and a half tenths faster. Let's see what we sit by the end of the session. So Lando Norris with the fastest lap of the session, 125.4. Max Verstappen and Lewis Hamilton just behind him. Let's see where we are. David Coulthard, P15, and we are P16. So both of us make it through to the next round of qualifying as expected. George Russell, Stroll, or Raikkonen, Aiken, Latifi, and Mazepin get knocked out. So let's move on to Q2. First lap, not quite sure if we'll make it to the line ahead of anyone. We are slowest. We have to try to make 6 tenths somewhere. Yeah, not much of an improvement. 1 tenth or so. Still P16. I think that's it. That has got to be it. All right, yes, we are knocked out in P16. Daniel Ricciardo with the fastest lap, 125.288. Max Verstappen and Norris behind him. Esteban Ocon, Sonoda, Giovinazzi, Schumacher, Coulthard, and myself get knocked out. 126.713 for me. So it's not looking good. We did make it into Q2, which is a plus. So let's see what we can do from P16. It'll be all down to race strategy on race day. Tough luck there. It's not quite where we'd want to be on the grid, but chin up. It's not the end of the world. Here we are again then at Le Castellet for another round of this year's Formula One World Championship. Renault took their first French Grand Prix win all the way back in the inaugural race in 1906, but it was another 73 years before they could take their second. I'm sure Alpine will be pushing hard to delight the local fans here today. Six lefts and nine rights give us a total of 15 corners here at the circuit Paul Ricard. And a lap covers an overall distance of 3.6 miles. Average speeds will be somewhere in the region of 142 miles per hour. And they'll be maxing out on the Mistral Strait at around 205 miles per hour. I'm joined again today by none other than Anthony Davidson. Tell me, Ant, obviously there's a lot of development work that goes on with these cars between the races. You've been both a test driver and a race driver. What differences are there in the way you approach those roles? Interesting question, Crofty. They're two very different mindsets. I mean, when I tested for BAR, we had full in-season testing where per driver, you'd cover up to 15,000 kilometers per season. And in that role, it was more about working for the team, trying to help them improve the car and drive as systematically as you could, so that that data could be analysed in the most consistent way. When you're lining up on the grid for a race, however, your frame of mind is all about what you can get out of the situation on that day, and the car's the tool to help you achieve what you want. You still want to focus on setup, of course, but it's more about the here and now, getting yourself as far up the field as possible, and less about development work for the future. It's time to take a look at our starting grid for today's race. Daniel Ricciardo has a clear view ahead from pole position. Edging out Max Verstappen, he'll start from P2. Looking at the rest of today's grid, we have Perez, Hamilton, Valtteri Bottas and Leclerc, Sainz, Vettel, Gasly and Esteban Ocon, Norris, they've taken a grid penalty, Sonoda, Antonio Giovinazzi and Mick Schumacher, Coulthard, the captain, George Russell and Lance Stroll, Raikkonen, Aitken, Latifi and Nikita Mazepin. And with lights out just moments away, it's time to go down to the track. Now that we've got some points on the board, let's continue this form and aim for another top 10 finish. Let's see what we can do from P16. Race strategy will mean everything. So let's see. Medium to hard is the 
proposed strategy. Let's see if we can add a soft stint at the end, if that will impact our time at all. Uh, seems like it's going to be very difficult to try to do a medium soft stint. So we will keep the medium to hards going. Fuel will drop to 75 or 45 kilograms. We can save some fuel. Our car is quite fuel efficient, I think. So, all right, medium tires all around. P16 starting position, not where we want to be, but let's see if we can make up lost positions as we get underway. Coulter with a beautiful start. Russell with an even better start. We had a decent start, I thought, but we are falling down the order. Dive bomb into turn one has worked out in our favor. P13 right now. Whoa. Up to P11 now. All right, we're right behind Norris. That was a decent move around everyone in that uh, U-shaped turn there. Can I get around Norris, please? Ah, we couldn't get him there. Oh, VSC is out. Why? Debris? Yep. High level of debris on track, so I don't know what it was. Nearly crashed into Norris. Someone definitely lost a wing ahead. Yep, Leclerc lost a wing. Raikkonen's also in the pits. A bunch of people in the pits. We're up to P10 now. Okay, safety car's ending. Oh, perfectly timed. Look at that. Got the overtake on Norris. Oh dear, Norris is trying to attack us. He is going to get by. We're going to squeeze him on the uh, inside. We're still ahead, thankfully. Come on, come on. This is decent racing so far. We need to get close to Gasly. Norris is trying the inside line. Can't get the move done. Pitts, Giovinazzi. Norris is really on my bum here. Norris is quite fast, so... Whoa, okay, something happened. Collision with Norris. Norris collided into me, mate. Vehicle condition. No need to worry about tire condition for now. Everything's looking good. All right. So despite Lando Norris going for a worldy of a dive bomb in a line that didn't exist, we've lost time to Gasly up ahead. Thankfully, no damage to the car, which will help us uh, stay competitive here. Sonoda and Alcon on mediums behind us, and Gasly and Vettel on softs ahead. So we're going to try and push while we can. Their softs are going to die off as well, so maybe it is best to just monitor the situation. Driver in front. Gasly is ahead of you. The gap to the car ahead is 3.0 seconds. They're on old softs. Their tires are four laps old. We think they've got two stops remaining. The time last lap was a 1.29.6. We're dropping back by a second per lap. Don't panic just yet, but uh, we've seen a problem. Oh already. dear. We're looking into it. Oh no. Is it another engine failure? Then it's the shortest episode in existence, mate. Safe space to retire or return to the pits.
What are you talking about, mate? Are you sure? Oh my god. I was on for a good race too. I did brilliantly at the start and then engine gives up. Oh my god, look at that. Ah, oh, this is a shame. So another fantastic victory for Red Bull today. What do you think it was, Ant, that gave them the edge over the competition today? Well, tyre management probably played quite a large role in the outcome of this one. As ever, it's not just about speed, it's all about maintaining that speed consistently over a stint, over a race distance. So being able to keep up the lap times while still being smooth on the controls and gentle on the tyres, that's really where the race was won today. Here come today's winners. The team at Red Bull have done a phenomenal job recently. It's clear to see that they've put in the work and they should be proud of the victory they secured here. Not surprised at all that Red Bull claimed the victory and P2 as well, Lewis Hamilton and P3. So very, very much a shame that we had to retire. But let's see where David Coulthard ended up. Maybe he secured us some points, but absolute shame. I invested in durability, but it has come to grasp us by the ankles again. Can't believe it. I cannot believe it. So Max Verstappen, Perez and Lewis Hamilton get the podium as we saw just now. Porta, Sainz, Sonoda, Alcon, Vettel, Gasly and Schumacher round out the points. Leclerc, Coulthard, Norris, Russell, Giovinazzi, Stroll, Latifi, Aiken, Mazepin and Raikkonen round out the finishing group with Ricardo and myself not finishing the race. What a heartbreak in France today. So let's take a look at the standings. We dropped to P6 again after a poor day out. And those points scored. Verstappen still very much in the lead. Constructed standings wise, Red Bull are very much in the lead on that one. Mercedes and McLaren behind them. And we are still P4 despite not scoring any points today. Sadly, David Coulthard couldn't score points for us. And we also couldn't score anything. So that's a bit of a shame. There we go. Well, what do you know? It's the shortest race I've ever participated in, I think. I don't know. Maybe one of the other episodes that had an engine failure we had a short episode but it is what it is uh, i spent so much points on durability recently and still durability is coming to grasp us by the ankles uh really poor poor uh durability effort out here today so otherwise i had a stunning race the medium compound tires were doing all right France is also a very front tire heavy uh, race, so that means front tires will die off really quickly. Um, but other than that, I really enjoyed the overtakes at the early stages of the race, getting us up to P11, P10, and then we made it up to P9 at some point as other drivers took uh, time in the pits to get a new set of tires and new set of uh, wings because there was a lot of debris on track, one VSC as well that we went through. So. Yeah, it is what it is. Uh, we gotta put our chin up and look to the next Grand Prix, which I believe is the Austrian Grand Prix, another fast circuit. So maybe we need to take some grid penalties for that one if we don't qualify as well as we expect. Definitely going to take some grid penalties in the near future, so I'm not sure what failed today. So hopefully it isn't something that we have an abundance of. Uh, so yeah, that is all I can think of. Uh, yeah, that is it for today's video. Sorry guys that the engine gave up on us, but that is the French Grand Prix. So next time out, the Ocean Grand Prix is happening. So please be sure to leave a like if you enjoyed this video. Subscribe, use the red button down below so you're notified when the next video goes live and hit that notification bell as well. So you are immediately notified in your sub box and on whatever device you are subscribed to me on uh, when I upload the next one. I hope you guys are doing well. And as always, please stay safe, stay healthy. And until the next Grand Prix, Please take care of yourselves, and I'll see you guys in Austria.